You bet. With the testimony now only hours away from Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook, what do lawmakers want to know from the CEO? Let's bring in a panel. Mazel Thompson, former FTC commissioner with us and former advisor to Facebook. Also joining us, Mark Rotenberg, Electronic Privacy Information Center president, who's actually charged Facebook with data misuse back in a 2011 complaint to the FTC. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Moselle, I'm trying to figure out what the biggest risk is to the Facebook business. Is it losing users, advertisers, or increased regulation? What's your take? Well, I think all of those were on the table. I think that they have a pretty solid advertising base and actually have a pretty solid user base. I think the challenge is, is what kind of regulation could take place that would single them out and uh, for practices that everybody in the industry actually is involved in. And so if it's lopsided in that way, then it could be harmful to them as opposed to their competitors. Um, I think this, what we're going to hear on the Hill, we're going to hear a lot of venting. Uh, what I would like to see is something come out of this where we can have a candid conversation with, between regulators and, and the community about the handling of data and what's reasonable to expect and what the public should demand. That's an opportunity. Um, sometimes Washington doesn't take advantage of op all the opportunities it meets. Yeah, we'll see if they can, they can go beyond just airing grievances. Mark, you've done a lot of work on what we'd like to see or what you'd like to see in terms of protection of privacy and increased regulation for companies like Facebook. Detail what you have in mind and whether you think any of it really has a chance of passing in this Congress. Well, let me begin by saying I'm very pleased that the Senate is holding the hearing today. I think it's a significant moment. And the fact that you see both the Senate Judiciary Committee and the Senate Commerce Committee working together is also favorable. Um, our view was shaped in large part by the work we did on Facebook and privacy almost a decade ago. Users had many of the same concerns that you're hearing this week about how their data is collected and how it's used. And we went to the Federal Trade Commission. We said, we really think you need to do something about this. We basically gave the FTC the evidence to establish a consent order, a legal judgment against Facebook, which they did in 2011. And that consent order actually put Facebook under the FTC's authority for 20 years. There are lots and lots of requirements there. What surprised us, of course, is that the FTC didn't act. So we're hoping that today during the hearing, senators will ask Mark Zuckerberg about that consent order, and then they'll have another hearing, bring in folks from the FTC and say, why didn't you do something when you had the chance before? Hey, Mozo, one, one question is, uh, how do you implement remedies uh, that don't lock in the incumbent advantage that a lot of these uh, big cap tech companies already have, just by the fact that they've been around for 10 years? Well, I think that's, I think that's an important question. Uh, I think they do have an opportunity to sort of set the standard for what's going to happen in this industry. Uh, what I would not like to see happen is for them and for that matter regulators to raise the barriers so high that there can't be any future competition in this area. Um. Mr. Rottenberg, I I'm curious about the 2011 consent decree that Facebook entered into. Do you believe that's going to come up at this hearing? Uh, is it if, um, of importance whether or not it was A, violated, or B, simply not enforced effectively by the uh, Federal Trade Commission? I actually think it's the key issue, um, and we're certainly going to be listening this afternoon to see how it's addressed. To be certain, uh, there will be a lot of criticism of Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook. Uh, he will talk about the steps that the company is taking to change its business practices. But as I said at the outset, we've actually had this discussion before. In fact, the Senate Commerce Committee held a similar hearing almost 10 years ago. So the question today will actually be what happens next. And to get to that, I think you have to talk about the consent order. You also have to talk about updating U.S. privacy laws because the U.S. right now has really lagged when it's come to uh, improving our privacy protections for users. I agree with Moselle and others, you don't want to lock in a current business model, but if you establish technology neutral safeguards for personal data and have them apply to everyone, uh, then I think you have a good starting point for an effective privacy law. 
Where I also Should agree with Mark, by the way, is that where the opportunity is, there are a lot of people involved in the data space. For example, all the data miners who are out there who don't really tell you what they're doing and you have no idea what they're gathering. So, and then all the app developers to give them a signal about how they should be using and not abusing data they get from people. That's the opportunity. I hope we can get to that discussion. Mark, I was just going to ask if Europe's new privacy rule is a model for the U.S., uh, one that Goldman Sachs analysts say is actually going to affect 7% of Facebook's uh, revenues. Well, I think the Europeans are definitely on the right track. They've spent a lot of time developing the privacy law. It is going into force in May of this year, and U.S. companies that want to participate in European markets, which is to say collect data on European consumers, understand that they're going to have to comply. So you have a situation now where the, a lot of U.S. firms are already aware of the European privacy law. Very interesting question to Mark Zuckerberg, which I think will be asked this afternoon. Uh, he said he's going to comply with the European law for Europeans. Would he also comply with the European Union law for Americans? In other words, shouldn't a U.S. company provide to American consumers protections that are as good as the protections that they are providing for European consumers. All right, gentlemen, we'll leave it there and see what happens on Capitol Hill later today. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.